when people talk about saving and they keep saying, you have to save, you have to save, you have to save 20%. And I have no money. Like I have barely enough to live on. And you're talking to me about saving. How does that even work? I see you. And that's what I'm going to be talking about today. How to save when you have no money. Hello friends. Welcome back to my channel, The Bulletproof Life. My name is Ronkyo Demumi and I'm delighted to have you here. If you are new to my channel, on here, I talk about all things money. Making money, saving money, budgeting money, investing money, everything you need to do to take control of your personal finance. So if you haven't subscribed, please press the red button on your right to subscribe. And don't forget to press the bell so you can get notifications every time I share a new video. So as I said earlier, I'm going to be talking about saving when you have no money. We're going to get real with each other today because I've been there, that place where you don't have enough. You're just, you know, surviving. You're just living on what you have, getting month to month. And people are talking about saving around you. It can be quite annoying. And you're there thinking, just let me survive, okay? Let me survive. Let me live. Let me breathe. Well, I'm here to say there are ways you can save even though right now you have no money. And that's what I'm going to be taking you through. So let's get right on it. How do you save when you have no money? The first thing you need to do when you have no money or when you think you have no money is to budget the money that you do have. So that little money that you have, that low income, that just barely enough income, or maybe it's even irregular income, it's time to budget it. And you're going to do a zero-based budget. I've done a video on how to budget and I'm going to drop the link to that video in the description so you can watch it. But the first thing you need to do is to budget and it's a zero based budget. That means you write your income at the top and then you list out everything you expect to spend that income on monthly. Once you've done that budget, it probably doesn't cover everything or it barely covers it and there's no room for saving. It's time for you to review your budget. That's the second thing you are going to do. You're going to review your budget for expenses that are unnecessary, expenses that can be removed. And my question is, can you survive without it? And I'm talking extras. They might not look like extras to you, but you need to look at subscriptions. Do you have Amazon Prime and Netflix and Sky or DSTV or something like that? Then you need to pick one. You can't have all four of them. You need to look at your phone contract. How heavy is it? Do you have that contract that is premium, that top of the range contract? You need to look at it. You need to review it. Your electricity and gas bills. How long have you been with that provider? There's no price for loyalty. If you've been with them for more than a year and you haven't changed your plan, you're probably on the wrong plan already. You need to look at reviewing your electric and gas suppliers. You need to look at your electricity and gas contracts and see if you can change, move to a new supplier. Some of these suppliers, when you try to move, they will tell you, oh, you owe us money um, because your monthly payments have been very low. So you now owe us some money, which you need to pay off. That's absolutely fine. Agree a payment plan, something very low, five pounds a month, 10 pounds a month. Agree a payment plan. There's no interest on their payment plans. Agree that and change suppliers. So remember, you start off with a zero-based budget. That's a budget that has the barest minimums, the things that you really need to have, your rent or your mortgage, food, your council tax, your key bills, transport, the things that you need to survive and to live life as a normal adult. Those are the things that go on your zero-based budget. Then you review that budget again to make sure that you are getting the best deal on those essentials. Once you have done those two things, the next thing now is for you to look at how you make purchases. Remember, food is an essential. You need to eat. But the question is, how much are you spending on food? So you need to review your grocery shopping. Do you go with a list? Do you stick to the list? Do you buy the things that you need? Do you shop hungry or do you eat before you shop? Again, I've done a video of how I shop for my family for a week and I practiced some of the things I preach in there. So you can have a look. I'll put a link in the description again to that video. So what you need to do is look at how much you spend on food and how you can keep that to a minimum. Do you eat out a lot? Do you do takeaways a lot? Those are things you need to look at. A takeaway is not essential. You need to look at cooking and eating at home. 
Cooking batch meals also means that you always have food so that when you are really hungry and have no energy to cook, you can just go and get something from the fridge, warm it up and eat and that's the meal done. So now you've done the budget, you've reviewed it, you've taken out what's not essential, you've looked at your shopping list, you're changing your shopping habits. The next thing you need to do is to look around your house for the things you don't need or you don't use and start selling them. A lot of us have wardrobes full of clothes that we don't wear anymore. We have things that we don't use anymore. They are on top of our wardrobes, they are in cupboards, they are in the garage, they are under the bed, they are all over the house, scattered. You need to start seeing those things as money. There are money lying around your house and you need to start selling them. The beauty of the internet is that there are so many platforms where you can sell your stuff. I sell clothes on Vinted. Clothes that I don't want anymore, but are still in good condition. I sell them on Vinted and it goes really fast. Household items like furniture, toys, and things you don't need anymore like that. They go very fast on Facebook Marketplace because they are local. You can sell them locally to people who live around you and you get your money for those things. Trust me, I have sold a lot of things on Facebook Marketplace. Let me think, what have I sold? I've sold a fridge, I've sold a mattress, I've sold a wardrobe, I've sold my children's dresser, I've sold toys, um, I've sold shoes, and this is the funny one, I sold stones, yeah, literally, I sold gravel. So we used gravel for the front of the house, you know, to pretty it up. So we bought two sacks and ended up using a sack and a half. So I had half of a sack of gravel left and I put this on Facebook Marketplace. Even I wasn't sure it was going to sell, like who's going to buy gravel? I felt that at the end of the day, I'm going to have to give it away to somebody else to pretty up their house. But I always try to sell things before I give them away. So I put this half sack of gravel on Facebook Marketplace and it sold same day. This guy came over with his truck, picked up my half sack of gravel, paid in cash and zoomed off with it. I was so happy. I was so delighted. So... You need to start seeing things in your house that you don't use, you don't wear, um, you don't enjoy anymore as money. You can sell them. The trick is to price them competitively. Remember, they are used. So you can't sell them at the price you bought them. You have to sell them at a price that's interesting, that's going to make somebody else want them or make somebody else think, hmm, that's not bad. That's just five pounds. That's just $10. I'll go for it. So you need to think like that and start selling things. That's a way to make money. And then, of course, everything you make from that goes into your saving pot. Remember, we're trying to save money. The next thing to do once you have pulled together things in your house and you're selling them is to get an extra job, a side or so. Honestly, everybody needs to have a side or so, especially if you're struggling to save or you're struggling to stay out of debt. You definitely need to have a side or so. I've done a video again. Honestly, guys, I'm really pulling out these videos. I've done a video again on side hustles. I gave about 10 examples of things you can do to make extra money. And a lot of them, you can do them from the comfort of your home. You can be a virtual assistant on Fiverr, on Upwork. You can clean. You can cook as a cooking service. Um, you can be a social media manager or social media assistant. All sorts of interesting things that you can do that will make you money. You could start a YouTube channel like I've done, but that doesn't make money for a while. You could blog, which also doesn't make money for a while, but does at the end of the day. So there are things that you can do that will bring you extra income. And all of that extra income goes into your saving pot. Remember, you're already living on the income you have now. So any extra income you make is meant to go into your saving pot. Once you have things going into your saving pot, the final step you need to take is to build an emergency fund. What's an emergency fund? What does that even mean? An emergency fund is a fund you have for emergencies, just like the name sounds. Now, getting a haircut or going to the salon or getting your nail done or buying a dress for an impromptu party, those things are not emergencies, okay? Emergencies are like things that impact your life that you need to get done, but you don't have money. For example, your washing machine packs up and you need to buy a new washing machine or your boiler packs up and you need to get it repaired or you need to buy a new one. 
or your car needs new tires because now the tires are gone and you need to get new tires on this on that car otherwise you can't go to work or you can't do school drop off or all of those things so these are emergencies now when you don't have an emergency fund you're going to dip into your savings or you're going to go into debt there are just two ways to it so to prevent you going into debt or prevent you going into the savings that we've worked so hard to put together from no money you're going to have an emergency fund. How do you do this? When you sell your stuff or get an extra job that pays money or simply cut your expenses so you have a little bit left, that little bit you have left, the first thing you do is to build an emergency fund. Your emergency fund should be about twice or three times your monthly income. Some people tell you to do six months, but you know, I don't think so. I think three months is fine to start with or even two months before you start building your own saving pot. And the reason why I say this is that if you're building an emergency fund that's too large, you're going to get discouraged from saving and going to just see your emergency pot as your saving pot. And we don't want you to do that. We want you to see it as your emergency fund separate from your savings. So your emergency fund should be a month's pay, two months pay, three months pay at the most. Once you have that built up, safe away somewhere in a high interest savings account or in premium bonds or in something that you can access quickly not under your bed but in a place where you can access it easily then you start to build your savings so you can no longer say you have no money that's why you are not saving because i've just given you five different ideas to help you save so i have a low income I have a lot of expenses. My money is barely enough. All of these are just excuses. Trust me, I have been there. I've done it. I've been on a low income, minimum wage kind of job and I couldn't save until I practiced these things I've just told you about. And once I started practicing them, I was able to build my emergency fund, then start saving. So people, let's get started on it. When people talk about saving now, you can chip in also irrespective of your income because your savings really has very little to do with your income. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope it's made sense to you. I hope you like it. If you do, please like, share, drop me a comment to let me know your thoughts. Let's connect, you know, this bulletproof community. Let's chat, 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 chat. I love it when you guys drop me comments. If you haven't subscribed, friends, you know what to do red button on your right click on it and then click the bell so that you can get notifications when i share a video and then you can watch it and benefit from it asap until my next video you take care of yourself and keep living that beautiful life bye bye